mother, the fundamental vow, the fundamental promise. Sorry, my conjures are loud. But it, you know, um, the the standard translation here is actually primal, primal vow. And it's a good translation, but that word's been used so much, primal instinct, with the Michael Douglas shares. Oh. And it, it's the same thing as the Nimbus. Now, what does it mean it's the same thing? You know, um, it, it means that Amida Buddha is the subjectivity that has accomplished this vow identifies Amida Buddha. It means that the Nembutsu is the acting out of this fundamental vow. Um, and this is also equals the pure Lena. You know, they're, they're all the same at, at some deep level. Um, a challenging question, even for those of us who believe there is a Buddha and there is a pure land, and I do believe in both of them, but it's hard for me to explain what it is or why someone else should believe in it, you know? But, is there a vow of universal liberation? Absolutely, yes, there is. There is this promise. This is the essence of Mahayana Buddhism. This is the Bodhisattva ideal. This vow has been made. Our, our idea that the vow has been embodied as Amida Buddha, that it has been realized in the pure land or the pure realm of influence, that it can be accessed through the Nambutsu, forms like Nama Amidabha you know, that's all specifically the pure land stream of Mahayana, but there's no. It, it, at, at some point, you have to be able to stop and say, this is real, this is true, I believe this. It doesn't mean you're not going to analyze or rethink or re reconfigure or re symbolize But Buddhism is about awakening to reality. And if we get too caught up in symbols and, and talk about symbol and metaphor and language, uh, and we start to lose track of what it's about. And it's about waking up to this, waking up to this reality we're living right now. And we really do have a confidence that this, this promise of universal liberation has been uttered, that this vow has been made, and that what we understand as Amida Buddha is, is realizing this. And you know, and this, I, I could stick a couple of other terms in there that are essentially equivalent. The Buddha, the Pure Land, Amida Buddha, Ojodo, Hongan, Nembutsu, all essentially the same, but Trying to hold on to what the Buddha is or what the Pure Land is can be difficult. But the promise of universal liberation, the idea that there is a commitment to take away people's suffering, to lead them away from delusion and towards wisdom, I know this vow has been made. I have no doubt about it. Has it been fulfilled? I can't really. Our teaching is yes, but I don't feel that there are millions of people who see the world this way. And essentially what it comes down to is that if there weren't an Amida Buddha, we'd become one. You know, it may take an indefinitely distant taking away people's suffering and bringing them to happiness, goodness, wisdom and compassion. This is what people will do when they awaken to reality. And so I, I think, you know, uh, as we look in the, the 21st century, um, I, I would keep bringing this back. We use the term bow, bow is the term, but promises are real. This promise has been made. Has it been fulfilled? Well, we say yes, but I don't we have to find that out for yourself in a sense. See if something changes in your life. But there's no question that there is this promise, this commitment to uh, leading all suffering and deluded beings out of, out of this realm of delusion and into a realm of light. So I better I better quit there because I'm gonna get a call from the UFB Shimon here in a minute.